also protests taking place in London today. And we're looking there at live shots of those uh, protests, which are uh, in downtown London. Uh, now, he's facing opposition in the United Kingdom. It's a slightly different sort. Trump is set to visit there in June. But they are, thousands are marching Westminster, demanding he be barred from the UK. And inside the House of Parliament, there's a move underway to at least downgrade his visit. Let's go now live to our London correspondent, Jonathan Sarchidote. Jonathan, explain to us What's going on in Parliament? What, what is the argument and debate there? Well, in Parliament today, in the Westminster Hall, rather than the actual main chamber of the House of Commons, there's currently a debate taking place for the last uh, hour or two over whether or not Donald Trump should have a state visit to the UK. You'll remember that Prime Minister Theresa May, when she went to see him as the first world leader to meet him after his inauguration, invited him for a state visit. That's the highest form of foreign leader visit that can take place in the UK, and it's uh, technically the invitation of the Queen. Uh, so people were very offended who are against Donald Trump and started a petition on the official website where you can start petitions to the House of Commons, and over 100,000 signatures on a petition gets a debate in Parliament, which is what's going on now. However, that debate isn't binding, and it's likely to have no actual effect on whether or not he's invited. Uh, now, Jonathan, I've read reports that they, there might even be an alternative plan to arrange a visit for him outside of London because of these events and the opposition of London. May you explain that to us? That's right. Well, the technicalities of the visit are still to be arranged. She did extend that visit after just seven days of his presidency, uh, which is actually a record compared to others in the past. No U.S. president has received a state visit uh, that quickly. Obama had to wait 28 months and George W. Bush 32 months and uh, President Trump just those seven days. Uh, so now there is this opposition and there are fears that there'll be protests like the ones we're seeing today outside the Houses of Parliament. Uh, if those protesters gathered in any great numbers when he visited, there would be some embarrassment to the nation. So part of the planning has been how to minimize that. One of the considerations has been to maybe host most of the visit outside London. Also, there's been the confusion over whether or not he'd be able to address the House of Commons as the Speaker John Burko, one of the three people required to invite him to do that, has said he wouldn't stand for that. Uh, so if that's the case, the official visit organizers have also been looking for a way that he could maybe uh, give a speech somewhere very important important, perhaps like a stadium in Birmingham, so that it doesn't look embarrassing that he isn't addressing the House of Commons. These sorts of considerations, of course, take place before every state visit, but there are just a few more of them this time. But John Jonathan, we're seeing live shots of those big crowds in London. But let's keep in mind, uh, the UK voted for Brexit. Does, aren't some of those people likely also to be Trump at least supporters or sympathetic to some of the issues Trump raised, for example, against Muslim immigration? Well, certainly some people have tried to draw parallels between uh, pro-Brexit voters and pro-Trump voters, but it's not necessarily that easy. Both, both are populist causes, uh, and both may have a few things in common, but the two are very different issues. Uh, what certainly is the case is that even with a couple of thousand protesters, as we can see now in Westminster, and maybe tens of thousands during a visit, that uh, doesn't really represent a large majority of the country. People that protest are often very angry and wish to make their views known, but people People who aren't against something don't often take to the streets to show their satisfaction with the status quo. So it's probably not the case that most Britons don't want the visit to take place. People are confused by Donald Trump the, as a president of the USA here, just as much as anywhere else in the world. Uh, but many agree with Theresa May and the government's official line that as Britain's closest ally, the United States is an important partner, and the special relationship between the two countries is one that should be nurtured through any means available. One of those, of course, being the state visit, just to solidify that relationship. And as Britain does move towards negotiating its exit from the EU, Theresa May and the government are looking for any opportunity they can to build solid trade relationships with other countries outside of the EU. Of course, America is one that's now front of the queue. Barack Obama having said during his visit before the Brexit referendum that Britain would be back of the queue, Donald Trump has said instead that he's very keen to make a deal with the United Kingdom. And Theresa May rushed towards America to see him as soon as possible just to emphasize to Europe and the rest of the world that Britain is looking outward for trade relationships with other nations like America. So the Trump visit will go ahead in June. Just give me a brief answer. They, these are just sort of bumps in the road. 
Uh, most likely, as with everything with Donald Trump, plenty of bumps in the road, but things are plowing on ahead full steam. And it's uh, uh, any, any chance of it being delayed to July? I've read that uh, today in the, in the British press. The date hasn't been set for this uh, visit at any point, so it could be moved, as you say. Okay, Jonathan Sarchidoti from London, thanks for joining us. And still to come, Comic-Con comes to Saudi Arabia.